the heartless to that world. The hunter lured them there. It was his lust for power that was the bait. But it seems the bait was too tasty for his own good. <laughs> yeah, he got chopped instead. Hmm. A weak-hearted fool like him stood no chance against the heartless. But the boy is a problem. He found one of the keyholes. Fear not. It will take him ages to find the way. Besides, he remains blissfully unaware of our other plan. Yes, the princesses. They are falling into our hands, one by one. Speaking of which... Hmm... Darkness is influenced by lust and pain and hate. But yeah, greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts commentary. We're gonna be saying goodbye to Deep Jungle as we never see it again, thanks to the Edgar Rice Burrows estate, and we get a new Keyblade. Uh, the first of which, really, because we didn't get one from Olympus or, uh, Wonderland. And again, to kind of reiterate my points as to what I said before, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier when we first got the Keyblade, but... Yeah, I'm pretty much going to be sticking with a Kingdom Key and Donald and Goofy's default equipment, but I will show them off in a cleanup video. So again, you will be seeing the Jungle King in action, it's just a little bit later down the line when I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. Again, like I'm also going to be cutting out this gummy ship sequence because we're basically just going all the way back to the first round, which requires two trips, and quite frankly, fuck that, you've already seen it, so uh, yeah, that's a little bit pointless. Oh, and they're arguing over steering the ship again. Uh, but yeah, now that we're back in Traveler's Town... Oh, it's time to put the kids to bed with a nice warm glass of milk. Nice story to read. We've got some new areas to explore. Well, uh, not that area just yet, but... Again, one thing you're going to be noticing immediately upon returning is that, uh... The Heartless are back! It seems that the Guard Armor may still yet live. We will destroy its demonic influence in this town. Uh, but yeah, recording-wise, this was... This part was initially a lot... A, little, a lot longer than, uh... I intended, or at least what I intended to show off. I think maybe, uh, back when I was recording this, I intended to kind of cut it up into pieces and, you know, just sort of... Make it as well necessary, but it's been a while since I last, uh, recorded this, so I forgot. So, uh, basically I'm just kind of hacking this together. And having this as more of a rambly part, which, uh, kind of makes me wish I had a drink right now, because I'm kind of nervous. Uh, but anyway, uh, unlo uh, yeah, excuse me, unless of a serious, less of a serious, more of a serious, I don't know anymore. Uh, but anyway, it's basically just gonna be running around Traverse Town. Again, there is gonna be a plot reason as to why we've come back here. Uh, namely, the navigational gummy piece that Donald and Goofy acquired from, uh, Monkey Poop. And, of course, my last attempt to st try and... <laughs> Trigger that easter egg. Sorry about that, I sneezed. And, uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't think you can get the no vacancy thing to say anything else, so... Blah. Again, you go around town, find different tre uh, treasure chests, and given the fact that we also have access to Red Trinities, also from Deep Jungle, yeah, this opens up exploration to a whole new level. Again, I did say that I'm going to be saving the Trinities for uh, more of a cleanup video kind of thing, similar to what I'm doing with showing off the Keyblades. But in that sense, I'm also going to be, uh, pointing out a few mandatory ones. Because, I mean, there are mandatory ones to kind of get you the know-how to actually use them, and, uh... I might have to do more research into this, I don't know if this was patched out in the Final Mix version, but... Uh, one where you're pretty much required to get it immediately, otherwise you can never get it again. But, I'll stay my tongue on that one. Um, in the intervening times, to try and remember what Heartless we have and haven't encountered, yeah, we have a few uh, more variants of the... Oh, uh, the Nocturnes. Again, I, I they all have different names, but we're introduced to two new variants, uh, one of which is the Lightning Elementals, and the other of which is the uh, Green Fuckers, the Healers. Which, uh, again, they're really weak and can t be taken down pretty easily, but they are a bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> pain to the max! Uh, but again, like, most of this is pretty much just violence. Just showcasing Traverse Town, it ain't safe anymore. And again, to reiterate further points, 
yeah, when you beat the Heartless in the world, or, you know, the boss Heartless and everything's all safe, again, like I mean, make sure you explore everything that you need to explore, because otherwise when you get back, the Heartless will be right there waiting for you. Good for grinding, but also a bit of a pain in the butt. And now I feel in the mood to play Max Payne. Uh, the first one, specifically, because it has the Finito Brothers. But that's neither here nor there in Kingdom Hearts case. Um, incidentally, kind of off topic, but fuck it, what else am I going to be talking about during violence? I recently just completed the Dante Must Die mode of Devil May Cry 1, that time of recording this, so uh, yeah, that's why that review took as long as it did. Or at least, by the time you see this. Oh, the 101 Dalmatians have been returned. Or at least part of them, anyway. And uh, again, this is... Again, if I didn't mention it earlier, this is more of something that does build up over the course of time. Uh, God, I forgot the dog's names. Pango and Bango, uh, they pretty much like give you gifts and presents and all sorts of stuff. And it's mainly just gummy pieces, so again, if you're into your gummy ship modification stuff, there you go. Um, I'll probably have to check the footage later on, but I believe one of the last presents I give you for all 101 Dalmatians is, um... Eroga, which is one of the most powerful wind spells, but again, that's also uh, spoiling a little something that you'll be seeing at the end of the pod. But again, I'll talk about additional magics as we go on and when they become relevant. And again, I'm trying to think about what. Uh, no, whatever. I was uh, thinking of the wrong thing. But again, like I mean, in regards to this commentary, I'm gonna try and make as best use out of all the magics as I possibly can. Because up until this very playthrough, I didn't really use that many besides uh, mainly a lot of the more offensive spells. Like, I mean, I mainly stuck to, you know, fire, lightning, but that was about it. Again, I never really used a lot of defensive spells like Blizzard or... No, no Blizzard isn't a defensive spell, you idiot. I just mainly stuck with um, stuff that I liked, but again, I did my best to try and make the best use out of gravity magic and a bunch of other stuff, so... Yeah, you'll be seeing that quite a bit. And of course, we meet uh, Squall and Aerith, just sort of chilling out down here. And of course, on the hunt for more treasure chests. Who the hell imprisoned them down in this danky basement? Who knows? Maybe uh, Cruella de Vil lives down here in the sewers and she isn't rich and she has to eat rats. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you can easily come back here right after you finish doing, uh, you know, Deep Jungle and uh, Wonderland. So yeah, you don't really need to do the Colosseum until the end game. <laughs> And that does also bring me to another point, but, uh, yeah, in the meantime, uh, pretty much just Squall and Aerith pretty much are saying, seal the keyholes because it's important to stop in the Heartless, and, uh, we're gonna put all this responsibility on a 14-year-old boy because, uh, fuck it. You know, like, I mean, we know if Squall and Aerith have dealt with gods among men and interdimensional time compression bullshit and, like, we Genova stuff, even though they really haven't in this continuity, so it doesn't make sense anyway. Oh look, Ellipses, it truly is the Squall Leonhart that we know and love. Tee hee, just laugh at him being the emo, whatever. Except not really. And of course, Squall doesn't decide to answer because he is a big meanie. But alas, this area does also contain more than a few tasty treats for us. Not only in terms of plot relevance for uh, later on down the line, but also for White Trinities. And basically, Squall and Aerith have nothing more interesting to say. And I forgot my original point that I was going to make, so, uh, dang. But in the meantime, again, like, I mean, this is ostensibly just exploring more of Traverse Town, and again, like, as much as this part is just waffling on about violence and breaking into people's houses, like Merlin here, and of course, occasionally checking uh, the fairy godmother to see if she has anything interesting to say, which in this case she doesn't, unless, of course, she gives you the, um, Summon gem? If we've even got one of those yet? Nope, we don't. I mean, like I said before in Deep Trungle and... Bleh, Deep Jungle and uh, Wonderland, like, I mean, I do generally have a good amount of knowledge about Kingdom Hearts. It's just that my uh, sense of chronology and order is a bit mixed up, so again, I know what I'm doing, but not the order that I'm doing it in. It's like... Br it's like eating breakfast while brushing your teeth. It's just, uh... Odd, and weird, and scary, and slightly arousing. Well... Not really. Maybe. You never know. This commentary is just getting raunchier and more raunchier. And I haven't even had a drop to drink. And I could definitely use some alcohol right now. Uh, but anyway, now it is time to return to Daddy Highwind. Or Adoptive Daddy Highwind. Sora is confused and there is a Moogle. 
I don't know what to do, Daddy Highwind. I met real father Cloud Strife. Am I Sora Strife? Or Sora... Uh, Highwind? I don't know. Daddy Highwind, help me. Yeah, but on a serious note, though, he's basically just talking about, uh, gummies, and even though Donald and Goofy have been flying around in spaceships since at least the time period of, like, birth by sleep, uh, yeah, they had know nothing about flying a spaceship, which I guess is apropos, like, I mean, one's a court mage, and the other one's, like, a captain of the Royal Guard, so I guess I don't really have, like, a dedicated pilot, even though I guess it implies that Chip and Dale are meant to be the experienced pilots, in which case, why aren't they with them? Or, uh, maybe the King Mickey was meant to be, like, a... Uh, the pilot? I don't know. Either way, the point is, we now have a Navi G, which basically means we can, uh, well, traverse to new worlds, and I believe we also get a warp gummy that's thrown in by Sid, which basically cuts the tedium in half. Basically, it means that any world that's, uh, fu well, basically you can pretty much just walk to any world you've previously been to. And, uh, thank goodness for that. It saves a lot of time and hassle and just getting back to previously visited worlds. Well, that didn't really go as well as I thought. But anyway, with that bell up there ringing, it ain't time for church. It's time for violence. The violence and carnage we must face. But again, we also have to talk about the Red Trinity. It's basically unlocks new areas, except there's a new animation with the three lunkheads just bashing into each other. And again, like, the animations do change depending on the color of the Trinity, so... Jobs are goodin'. Even though we could have quite easily jumped over here, as I tried to establish in the beginning of the game, but no invisible walls and the confines of our own digital existence play havoc on us yet again. Which is, uh, actually a bit of a relevant thing in Kingdom Hearts when it comes to the digital realm. But I'll stay my tongue on that for when we get to, uh, 358 over two days, or at the very least, if you remember that one little, uh, edit I slipped into the Chain of Memories commentary. But anyway, this is pretty much where the part uh, picks up in terms of, like, story content, or at least very meager story content. Hmm, yes, meager fee. Hmm, tray tray. A fine vintage. But yeah, basically, it, it, it pretty much just involves a bit of fuckery around with, like, um, uh, triggering the electricity in the third district, which again was what you did with that exposed wire. Get the gizmo shop to work, basically just jump around and interact with this. And of course, you'll climb the ladder and, well, interact with a bell. Uh, these are some of the other interesting enemies, the... I'm sure they have a name, but I just call them the helicopter fuckers. Uh, to use a more relevant example as to what sort of enemy type they are, they just sort of fly around, give you a bit of a kick, and in terms of early game enemies, are probably going to be the, one of the more annoying ones, because they can block your attacks, fly out of the way, or just deal some lameoid damage, which is like, totally lameoid, dude. And I just slipped back into a 90s thing. No idea why. Something I used to do all the time, back in like, 2014 or whatever. Uh, those were the days, and I now lament that those... <laughs> the 2010s are getting further and further away. As does my youth, and will to live, and... The only thing that grows is... My frustration, and desire to drink. Uh, but on a serious note though... Uh, yeah. This is actually a pretty good place to grind if you wanna... You know, spend the time to do so in Traverse Town. Uh, then again though, like, I mean, you're not getting a lot of the powerful hard loss, or at least no more so than what you would have gotten in the Olympus Coliseum, where again, if you wanted to grind uh, for the levels, or, you know... And that's of course Sonic Blade, what Cloud was able to use, basically, and again, uh, press the triangle button repeatedly to continue to use Sonic Blade, and again, you'll have, like, one final, this is it, attack, and then your story will basically charge through. I believe in the PS2 version, basically just, um, uh, get the right analog stick right down to the bottom, of the little command menu, and basically you get the same effects. So really, just convenience's sake and a bit of a quality of life improvement for Final Mix. And I forgot my own original other point, but hey, that Sonic Blade was showing off a lot of these moves. And again, we will get more skills as we progress, so again, like, I mean, while it is usually mapped to one button, it's nowhere near as cumbersome as you might think. Like, I mean, you can equip a special attack, and depending on how much um, MP you have, which is determinant on uh, what sort of moves you can pull off, kind of similar to the Matrix Path of Neo now that I think about it. Yeah, that pretty much just showcases what you can do, but at the same time, I do also advise caution for specific moves that you want to use, because, I mean, otherwise, if you don't, if you have this, um, if you have two specific moves that cost the same amount of MP, you might not get the... A moveset that you want, and as such, well, prioritize with another rousing game of item management. The game. But again, that's kind of to be expected in an RPG. But again, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 is very simplistic enough in design so that 
you don't really have to be very think tank about the whole thing. Like, I mean, this is... It, it's far from the bloody junctioning system of Final Fantasy VIII, I'll say that much. And of course, uh, yeah, to do with items, I could probably talk about that. Again, we have tents, cottages, and you can basically just pitch them up and get a full health restore. Though it does kind of bring to mind a pretty funny image of how RPG heroes can just pitch up a tent wherever. Like, no city moving permits, no angry royal guards trying to get out them gypsies and follow God and whatever. Hunchback of Notre Dame, everybody. The movie that I have actually seen. So that'll probably save me talking about it when we get to Dream Drop Distance, but yeah. I'll probably save the rest of it for then. And again, now that we have access to the rooftops, we can basically explore. Uh, one thing I actually do miss up until actually one of the later segments. I, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't show this off because I cut it out for pacing's sake. But yeah, this is also where you can find more postcards, which get you more uh, either synthesis materials or uh, just some more cool stuff. So again, it's worth it to explore with what mild platforming elements Kingdom Hearts 1 have. Has, have, will be, could have been. Eh, uh, whatever. But again, this pretty much leads you to the third district right atop that little uh, balcony thing. And again, another thing to also kind of talk about, which I probably should have mentioned earlier, is that, yeah, when you're in combat, you can't, well, basically, you can't access the pause menu. I mean, you can pause the game, but you can't access the menu, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But again, you could probably break the game if you could just bust out a cottage and get yourself fully healed up with all MP and all that kind of stuff. And of course, uh, well, yeah, it's only a bit of a pain in the ass in this game because it means you can't get treasure chests and quickly go back to the action. I believe Kingdom Hearts 2 was a similar uh, setup. I think Kingdom Hearts 3 rectified that though, which is uh, excellent because Kingdom Hearts 3 is good in spite of what scummy internet people say because they're fucking bitches and it's just like it's a bad game because it doesn't live up to my arbitrary expectations. Grr, grr, YouTube leave the fucking meme shit. Whatever. Oh boy, I am fucking angry tonight! And again, this is also where it plays a factor, because you can't interact with anything else. Uh, something you're going to be seeing a little bit earlier on here is that I'm basically trying to get on with the game, but because one of those uh, little lightning no nocturnes got uh, bashed off the roof, yeah, I try and access the Red Trinity, but I can't do it, and so I have to go back to the battle, then wait for it to fade away, and again, you can tell when you're in combat and out of combat, uh, when, you know, the characters, uh, well, at least when the command menu is red, and again, the characters pretty much go, Sora, don't give up, we have to commit violence! And again, I try and locate where it is, but I really don't want to fucking fall off, and... Again, like, I mean, as is typical RPG logic, you enter a room, come back out, enemies will respawn, and again, like, I mean, the only way I can possibly get back up there is to go through the gizmo shop, back out the other side, and climb the ladder, which, again, would risk, you know, enemies respawning, and I don't fucking want to deal with that, man. I mean, it's more XP, but, you know, I want to get shit moving, dude. Like, this original part was, like, 28 minutes long before I cut things down to 24 here. Or 2350. But again, like, I mean, this really isn't anything to complain about, it's just a bit of a bugbear that, at least in terms of gameplay, is rectified when, you know, you finagle around a bit. And of course, as is tradition with the rule of three, ring the bell three times and you will find your summons to the land of fiction. In the Mitchin. And of course, we get some pretty uh, decent mural artwork for Traverse Town. Again, this is pretty much the first and only time you really have to use the bell, so uh, don't bother using it again. It's only useful to reveal the keyhole! And never again. As we will soon see here. And again, I might have brought up this piece of trivia before, but uh... Yeah, in terms of Kingdom Hearts development history, Sora was initially not going to lock these keyholes with his laser beam anime powers. Instead, he was going to lock it by well, shoving the keyblade into it and uh, locking it. So, uh, yeah. I did have another bit of uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 trivia, but again, since I've pretty much padded out for time and off, we can pretty much just talk about the upcoming boss fight and I'll save that for next time. Or at least when it becomes a bit more relevant. Again, we do still have a bit more to do in Traverse Town before we, uh, you know, go to the next new world in the, you know, the part after that, but yeah. Let's heal everybody up and face our encounter. Guard armor. I should have known you'd show up here. Come on, guys. Let's beat this guy up. 
But things might not be as easy as they seem. And again, this is uh, the recolored god armor, not the original uh, violet and dark pink one. But again, we'll see what this means a bit later, because we see some slow-mo. Had enough? Don't worry. Cheesy speech of What's going on? Oh no. Something's going on. Transform, and yeah, this is pretty much the opposite armor. A transformation basically achieved by flipping the toy upside down and doing the same shit you've probably always done with your action figures when you don't want it to go, ha ha, now this Optimus Prime is now the evil Optimus, because I moved his head down up his ass and now it's got a butt cannon that can shoot out at you. And uh, I'm not just saying that to make a crude joker from five years old, no. The, g <laughs> the opposite armor does have a few more damaging attacks. Again, you should pretty much- well, again I say that as I nearly die, but Again, you should be able to handle his uh, attacks. The damage output is high, but again, take out the body parts and just avoid the uh, body cannon because again, the uh, the large body will fire out uh, energy blasts, which I thought you could deflect, but uh, apparently not. You could just block it, which is part of the reason, at least as you'll be seeing a little bit later, why I tried to deflect it and was severely disappointed. But I may bring colors as such. Strategies don't really change with the guard armor. Go to town on it. And uh, really, that's all she wrote. Again, you are peppered with HP balls in case you're a little bit butterfingers on the controller, so no harm, no foul. To discuss anything else, uh, not really. Again, one thing I didn't really show off the last part, although I think I might have drunkenly brought it up in passing at least. Yeah, we also have Cure from uh, Deep Jungle. You get it from beating Clayton and the Stealth Sneak, and uh, well... Yeah, it's immensely useful. Uh, I would say that potions go out the window, but then again, it's probably best to keep mega potions and, uh, you know, ethers on standby, because goddamn you're gonna need it, especially for one of the secret bosses that, uh, I shouldn't reveal. And again, this is me trying and failing to deflect the shot. This time I get it, and I am disappointed to see that it did fuck all. Uh, but I mean, again, that's pretty much the only unique thing. So, whoopee for opposite armor, I guess. But again, with this, the Heartless will vanish until we return and they come back. And, uh, it's up, I think it's at that point where the synthesis stuff comes into play, so, uh, all more to talk about next time. I don't know if you can leave this, uh, boss fight. I, I guess maybe you can, but I don't know. I've never tried that before. But anyway, on that note, we've still got a little bit more left. But let's watch the, go the opposite armor dissipate and then I'll do my little sign off thing. Be free, little heart. Return to Kingdom Hearts where you belong, and fulfill the plan. Anyway, on that note, I am Solid Scully, keep a new medal, and I'll see you next time in the Kingdom Hearts commentary. Bye bye